Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ashley Huang. Here's a case I would like to share with you. This 15-year-old young man wasn't satisfied with his teeth. Luckily, he had a straight profile and his face was symmetrical. But the but evident buccal corridors was the problem. Other problems included that he had a crossfide upper right canine and his incisor was too uprighted and some interdental spaces over the left side. The panel showed two second premolars were congenitally missing, and the patient still had a primary second molar on the right side. Let's have a look at the set tracing. It showed this patient was skeletal class one with retro kind upper and lower incisors and retruded lips. The total GI score was 15, and we had two treatment plans for this patient. Plan A, extract E and close all the spaces. But the disadvantage of the plan, plan A was, remember he already had a dish in face and retro client incisors. We didn't want to make that any worse, so we decided to against this treatment plan. And we went to plan B, keep E in place and open up the space for a dental implant. The patient was happy about this point, so this was the option we took. There were three main keys to solve the problems. The first key, in order to correct the crossfire upper right canine, two posterior biturbos were built on the lower molars. As the arch while progressing, the blood in canine was aligned into the arch. Second key, the implant site space was made by compressing an open coil spring. Key number three, how about E? This primary tooth was not so stable and its roots were shallow. We didn't want it to move. So from the start of the treatment to the end, this tooth was not bounded throughout the treatment. We performed interproximal reduction to become seven millimeter which was similar size to an adult second premolar. It is best to delay this tooth extraction as long as possible because it enhances the preservation of the ridge and acts as an ideal space maintainer for a future implant. We spent 20 months to finish this case and the implant site preparation was ready. The total CIE score was 17, and it passed the ABO criteria. The result was satisfactory. The inclination of the upper incisor have been increased by 4.5 degree, and the lower incisors have only one degree decrease after closing all the spaces. The reason why we had such a good result was because the class two elastic and the upper pre-talk nighttime wire were used. The retrusive upper and lower lips have made the profile more concave. Luckily, it is still acceptable for a male patient. The increase in the mandible length indicated that there was still growing in this young man. It is generally agreed that the implant should be placed <coughs> after the skeletal growth was completed. This also influenced the decision not to extract E. So for this case, was it the best timing to place an implant uh, right after debunking? Actually, the patient waited for seven months for uh, until the implant surgery. And from the day that the patient had finished also treatment to the day the implant supported crown was delivered, it took 15 months, which was a very long period due to skeletal growth not completed. In a growing patient, we need to consider maxilla and mandible growth, which de de decreased with time, and it diminished greatly after the age of 18. For this case, the implant was placed after the, the patient was over 18. <coughs> Active eruption of the adjacent natural tooth would cause infra-occlusion of the implant. 
and passive erosion continues throughout life. The gingival margin will migrate rapidly and cause aesthetic problems. We delay the implant placement because the, the amount of cranial facial growth decreased with time. However, if we wait for too long, we would face a worse condition of the ridge, such as bone resorption or sinus pneumatization. Too early or too late, both are not good. It is important to find a suitable type in the middle of these two. Let's back to this patient. In CT slice view, the horizontal bone thickness was 10 millimeter, but the vertical bone height was only five. So the maxillary sinus lifting technique must be performed. According to Dr. Homer's sinus lift decision-making tree, um, the crestal approach with a standard lens input was suggested. We raise the flap, follow the drilling protocols, and then place a guide pin. Take the, uh, take the x-ray to check the angulation and the sinus floor position. And we use osteotome to elevate the sinus floor. After that, FT FDBA was packed as bone graft. Following this, a 4 by 9 millimeter implant was placed. We waited for six months for bone maturation and osteointegration. Raise the flap again and change the cover screw to a healing abutment. And we waited for another two months to allow soft tissue to mature. But there were some problems we encountered. As you can see, the abutment was too close to the first molar. So the IPR was performed to provide sufficient space for the path of insertion. In addition, there was not enough interoclusal space for a PFM crown. But we can trim the abutment extraorally with a high-speed high diamond bird to get enough interoclusal clearance. After that, a double cord impression was made by a PBS, and the abutment was covered with tonicat for soft tissue modeling. <coughs> Two weeks later, a PFM crown was delivered. As you can see from the pictures, we have a very good result. And the patient was very satisfied with his teeth. Mm -hmm. Now he has a good, great smile. Thank you very much.